Is there any chance of an 11th hour compromise? Congressman Trey Gowdy joins us. Nice to see you, sir. Hey, how are you? Okay, so how did you vote this evening? Uh, voted yes uh, on, on the, the latest iteration of our offer to Senate Democrats, which is to treat everyone equally. You would, you would think that would not be the third salvo, uh, that that would have been written into the law initially, but uh, I voted yes uh, and uh, was actually eating dinner with Tim Scott and Jason Chaffetz. We left to vote yes. Tim got up to vote yes on the Senate and, and we still had time to finish our meal. So that's what passes for for uh, discussion and debate in this town. In one hour, we vote yes and the Senate votes no. All right, so it is now going back to you from the Senate and it's a clean CR. In other words, the only issue is coming back to the House is um, funding the government for six weeks, not even you know very long, but just six weeks. And so would you, could, uh, if it comes back, if, if, if uh, the House leadership takes out of it defunding Obamacare or uh, this whole the special treatment for Capitol Hill, could you vote yes? Could you, could you accept that or not? No, ma'am. Uh, we, want, we wanted a full defunding of Obamacare and, and not for political victories. I know the president likes to tell us that. I haven't had a single constituent tell me that they thought the Affordable Care Act was working for them. I've had scores tell me it's costing me either a job or hours. So we started with a, with a defund. Then we, again, negotiating with ourselves because the president is, is too busy to talk to us, we went from defund to delay. He still won't talk to us. So then we said, well, how about we just treat everybody the same? Just treat everybody equally uh, under this law and do away with the individual mandate like you did for, for the employer mandate. Or, or make corporations pay up now? He still won't talk to us. So I am tired of negotiating with myself. You, you were a courtroom lawyer. I was one a long time ago. I, we're, we're plea bargaining with ourselves right now. So I, I'm not going to do that. I, how about your colleagues? Do you have the sense that, uh, I mean, are, are they getting weary? Would the vote, is the, would, if, when it comes back to the Hill, if there's, a, if there's a vote between now and midnight on the clean that comes over from the Senate, are they getting weary? I think some of them are, not because they don't believe in the principle that we've been fighting for, but, but because it's tough for us to win the narrative. If you look at the history of shutdowns, lots of them have been caused by Democrat presidents and Democrat congresses. But for whatever reason, Republicans are always blamed for the shutdown. And I have colleagues who are understandably worried that we're going to be blamed this time. My perspective is this. How long is too long to fight for something that you think is really, really important? For 12 days in 1979, this government shut down. Do you remember what the issue was, Greta? A pay increase for Congress for 12 days. So can we not last one day when it comes to religious liberty or treating people equally? Can we not last for a week on something as important as religious liberty and treating people equally? If we can shut this government down for two weeks because of an aircraft carrier, or because of a pay increase for Congress, surely a week is not too much to invest for something like religious liberty. Is the leadership of the House, though, pounding everybody right now? Because that now is making that the, the Senate uh, CR is now making its way out of the House. It may have arrived already. It's got a little bit of a procedure. Um, is, the, is the leadership pounding on calling up all those who, who are, feel as deeply about this as, as you do? Uh, not only are they not pounding, I, I haven't even had a, a cross look from, from Eric or Kevin. In fact, no, but has anyone called you? Uh, I talked to Kevin a lot. Anyway, yeah, I've talked to him several times this afternoon. I, I, I think Kevin, Kevin's perspective, Ken, that's, uh, Kevin, Kevin McCarthy, who's, who's our whip, whip and a whip. wonderful person and, and in a tough spot. Anybody in leadership's in a tough spot. I, I think they understand we don't want the government to shut down. That narrative is false. I, I don't have a colleague who wants government to shut down. By the same token, if you are fundamentally convinced that something is bad for your constituents and it's costing them jobs, at what point do you fight? And, and, and so we're, we're torn so what, between two things we don't want. We don't want the Affordable Care Act, and we don't want to shut down. So how do you reach your decision? How does anyone, what are, what are your, your members who voted like you tonight so far, or there may be another vote? I mean, how do, how do you decide? Well, I, I think I've, I've heard the president with two news conferences so far, and I thought I was back in a law school classroom. The lecturing tone, the condescending tone, if he's got time to talk to the Iranian president, if he's got time to draw a Maginot or a pink line in the sand with Syria, and if he's got time to play golf on Saturday, I think he ought to have time to talk to John Boehner. We have well, changed... Well, they talked tonight. Apparently they talked tonight, and, they, and, they, and there was still no budging by either one we've of them. We've changed our position four different times. 
So when I go back home with my constituents say, why are you negotiating with yourself? That's a really good question. We want the law defunded. We have we have gone from that all the way to just treat everybody the same and don't show any special privileges or exemptions or waivers for anyone. Does that include all the units that have gotten special deals so far? I mean, you're well, that's with, too many to count. What? That's 1,200. There were no, 1,200 waivers. Oh, no, but I mean, I mean if, if everyone's going to be involved, are we going to sort of go back and revisit that? Because a lot of people got special deals. And you want to know something? It wasn't the small business people in my hometown because they can't afford lobbyists. You know, they're just small business people. I mean, the people who, who got lobbyists, I mean, they're the ones who got the exemption, the ones who have access, the members, the people on Capitol Hill who get to the president to get to OPM to change the rule to get this uh, subsidy for federal workers. They got access. You know, You're they're right. getting special you, deals. They're getting you, real special deals. You would think if it was so great, no one would want a waiver. There have been 1,200 waivers. I will settle for just members of Congress and our staffs living by the same set of rules that we ask your viewers to live by. I started with a defund. I'll settle. Mr. President, just make everybody play by the same rules. He won't even talk to us. Well, right? so, that, so that actually is a... So you'd let that... So if it came back to the House and the House voted that it was just everyone gets treated the same, you, you would take the defunding out of it? You could vote for it, and a delay of the individual mandate. Yes. Well, that, that, one, that uh, you're not going to get that one. Um. Well, but you know what I would say to him is, Mr. President, the fact that you may have pride of authorship in a bill is not sufficient reason for me to vote for it. I, I think it's killing jobs. The only reason you can give me for not delaying Obamacare is it's your signature piece of legislation. Uh, it, pr pride is never a good reason to do something. Is the fact that this is only a six-week deal? It's laughable. I mean, I mean that's the other thing. I mean, that's what nobody's talking about. Is this big fight on Capitol Hill is, and the best Capitol Hill can do between the CRs bouncing back forth is talking about six weeks to fund the government. You that's would think it. we were debating a constitutional amendment. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's six like, weeks. I, so it's, it's, I should laugh, but it's, it's because it's so serious, but it's six weeks. That's how you get a 7% public approval rating. And wonder who those 7% are other than family and maybe staff. Congressman, always nice to see you, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am, you too. You're going to join us when we go to 7, right? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, good. Yes, ma'am.